So the U.S. women's national team lost to Sweden in the round of 16 yesterday in penalty kicks as the U.S. missed three crucial shots, with the last one being from Megan Rapino that could have sealed the victory for the United States to move on. This is the first time the United States has not made it into the semifinals. And on that last shot, it actually got saved, but then on the, the backspin, mere millimeters, that ball fully crossed over the line. Sweden moves on. So I want to know, what's the reaction to the U.S. falling short and route to winning a third straight World Cup, which has never been done in men's or women's before? Mm. What's the reaction to the U.S. women's national team and their journey so yeah. far? Well, their offense is clearly on paper. It looked like they were lacking s seriously they didn't score many goals but if you watch that game they had like ump the ump number of opportunities and they just couldn't put it in the goal right i mean the the goalkeeper for sweden had a a, a, a career game <laughs> right that, that's a a career game right. that she had she'll never have another game like that she had like what 11 saves a lot of those shots were good shots and she managed to to stop them so I just think the uh, the U.S. they just couldn't get a break. They couldn't. Uh, they had no luck in that game. Right. And then uh, Megan Rapino to smile and laugh after she missed that shot. She should have been on the ground crying. I, I don't understand that. What I didn't I didn't follow her her uh, vibe there. It seemed like the totally opposite of the way she should react. Right. She was smiling. Yeah, like, no, uh, no, no, I, 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 I saw missed that. it. Uh, so big deal, you know. I missed it. Well, this, this that was the, uh, that could have gotten it for them. It could have, right, yeah. You know, and, and she missed it. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. that shot, if she didn't miss, that would have made. I, th I think that would have been the winning shot. Yeah. I, I, I could be wrong, but I think that was to seal the yeah, game yeah. there. Uh, but this is only the second time in the United States uh, women's uh, with uh, the United States women's national team history that the U.S. has been second in in the in their in their group stage. The group stage was horrible. They scored, uh, was it, four total goals? I mean, in, in total, like, this is sort of what uh, some teams in other sports do. Try to combine the veteran with the with the young. And the the, the veterans on that team, they were not good. They, they did not perform very well. Uh, there, were, there were three young players. I, I, I'm forgetting their names now. They showed up. Like, like the, the United States women's national team, their younger players, they actually, I'm not saying we, we go back to rebounding and win another two straight. You know, there's some promise there, and I think maybe we could see, you know, the the, the coach for the for the national team. You might, you might want to let him go a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think you're right. Because you, in internationally, he's not shown the same amount of success as he has uh, in, in 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 past matches. So my guess would be, you know, what, get rid of the coach. The vet, all the no, the veteran players they may retire, and then you got this whole you got a brand new coach, young core, built up a new team, going to going to a rebuild, and you'll see if we can, you know, come back from this. What I do know, though, is if I needed to pick a team to win this, I'm picking Japan. Yeah, I think Japan so too. is insane this year. So I, they, they're really they fun to watch. They scored 11 goals and give up zero. They haven't given up a goal yet. Yeah, they're they're really fun to watch, man. They've got that fast break offense. Yeah, they they have a lot of open field running, and they get those guy those girls get open, and uh, they they take the ball right down there and score. They've got some very good players. No, they they, yeah. they do. All right, let's get into our next topic here. So, former Commanders, uh, Colts, and Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz. Let's, let's bring up the graphics here. He was posted on Instagram throwing all three teams' gears. The Eagles helmet, the Commanders jersey, the Colts pants. Yeah, there he is. Oh, that, that's for the next topic. Uh, so, I mean, Carson Wentz, is he going to get a job? Will he ever get another? We talk about quarterbacks that, that, that could know. be available. Carson Wentz, he's sort of being a little bit desperate, I would say. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think that uh, I think I'd go with Marcus Mariota before I'd go with Carson Wentz. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Or maybe even Blaine Gabbert. I might go with him before I go. with Carson Wentz played terrible for the uh, for the uh, Commanders. I mean, he is he's, he's an interesting uh, you know had an interesting career, right? He started out with the Eagles. Uh, it looked like he was going to be a, a a perennial all pro. He was an MVP candidate. Yeah, he yeah, was an MVP candidate. He got hurt. He, he tore his ACL. The Eagles won the uh, Super Bowl that year with Nick Foles. Well, Nick Foles is a backup. Beat the Patriots amazingly. Yeah. He comes back the next year. He's not so good, right? And the and the Eagles struggled to get into the playoffs. 
Uh, he, wasn't he hurt again, or did he play? Did he was he the playoff quarterback? I can't remember. They won one game. I think Nick Foles was actually back there again. <laughs> I think uh, he was. I think he was back there. I think Wentz got hurt again. Uh, 2019, uh, when, when that that was the year uh, he came back. I guess no, he was the MVP candidate. Then the following year, he, he only played 11 games. 2019, they made the playoffs. He threw four passes in that game. So my, if I had to just think, I, I'm not remembering it. He, I mean, based on what yeah, I'm staring at, he probably Foles, got hurt in that Foles, game. No, but Foles played that game. He, he was in that game, too. Well, I'm, I'm sure because yeah. Carson Wentz only threw for four, four passes, passes in the entire yeah, playoff yeah, So he's out. So then there's still a question about him. Then he comes back the next year, right? Right. And he's still with the Eagles? Uh, or did they trade him to the Colts then? 2020, he was still with the Eagles. He played 12 Eagles. games, went 3-8-1. Yeah. and one. Yeah, they were terrible. They were garbage. Right? Then they got, then they dropped him. Got he him. went to the Colts on a pretty good deal. He actually, right? he yeah. actually played pretty well. Well, he had to hit, hit 30, some 3,500 yards, 27 he, touchdowns, seven picks. That's yeah. a pretty good year. And then, no, what happened was... But he Jer- made some key mistakes. Oh, you know, right? there, there And then the last mistakes. game, I only had to beat the... Jaguars. The Jaguars, and he couldn't do that. In that the Urban Meyer screwed up year. Yeah, they were They know they what the hell they were doing. They yeah. were terrible, and they couldn't beat them then. Then he went to the Commanders, and he was terrible. Yeah, no, just he, a, it's, it's pretty bad. terrible. It's pretty bad. And they benched him for Heineke. Then they brought then, him then back. Then they brought, brought him back, and he was terrible. It wasn't good. And then they went to Howell. Then they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now they dropped him, and, he's, and now he's practicing with the— uh, the uniforms of all the pl- teams he's been on. So it's a little bit of a desperate hopeful, move, I think. Uh, hopeful to get him back in. He's trying to show people, yeah, look at these teams I played for. Yeah. Right? So pick me up. But uh, it doesn't look likely. Here's the thing. The Eagles, okay. The Commanders, ah, the, 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 you really want to rep the Commanders jersey? I don't yeah. think that's a reputable thing saying, I played for this team. Yeah. The Colts, they're okay. But still, no, I don't think that's good. Uh, let's get into our uh, last news story here. So, uh, Red Sox manager Alex Cora made some comments on the decision to bench outfielder Alex Verdugo after the August 5th game in a 5-4 loss. This is what he had to say. We took a step back as a team. You know, like, we have to make sure everybody's available every single day here for us to get to wherever we're going to go. That wasn't the case, and uh, as a manager, i, t- I got to take... You know, uh, charge of this, and uh, I decided he wasn't going to play. No, maybe, I mean he's been mature, you know. But today, you know, for for we took a step back as a team. We have to be available. Everybody has to be available for us to to do this. We have to be available from coaches to players to to analysts to the front office. Everybody has to be available every single day here. That's the bottom line. And today, one guy wasn't available. I mean, supposedly Alex Verdugo showed up two hours before. The opening pitch, and then you know, Cora's like, "Yeah, no, no, you're gonna get benched today." And then uh, he also said that that wasn't part of that soundbite. He could have played that, or they, they they might play him in the next game. He did play in the next game, went three for four, and they got blown out thirteen to one. So I don't know what, what, what the hell do you think is going on between Verdugo and Cora here? Well, if Verdugo didn't show up on time, then that's legit. Well, he know? was he was asked, "Did you show up on time?" Verdugo went, "Yeah." Which and it's it's kind of funny because there was a rumor right before the trade deadline that the Red Sox may trade Verdugo. Yeah. And then and then they, he doesn't get traded and then something like this comes out. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Red Sox are in a bit of a turmoil, maybe. Yeah, I like Alex Verdugo. I think he's uh, quite a good player actually, and uh, he doesn't seem like somebody who doesn't hustle. He always said hustling out on the field. I think he tries hard and he he's had some key hits this year. Had some game winning hits. Played some great defensive plays as well. I don't know why why he and the coach are having a problem. So that's unfortunate. I think this could be you know sort of a desperate thing. People's jobs are on the line. Core's jobs probably on the line. Yeah. Bloom's jobs on the line. I don't know. The, the Red Sox. I think they're starting they've to get been, desperate. They've been like a sine wave this season. They're terrible, and then they're good, and then they're terrible, and they're good, and they're terrible. Right now, they're on a terrible streak. Yeah, they lost no. three. It's they've lost bad. five in a row now. Yeah. Three at home. Three straight to the Blue Jays. Yep. Now they're playing the uh, Royals. They ought to be. If they can't win those games, then uh, I don't know. Well, well, well here's the thing: the Ro- the the, uh, the A's, the Red Sox. Got, if I'm not mistaken, got swept by the A's. They were the no, worst. No, they team. didn't get swept by. They won they one won, game. They won one. Yeah, game. they won. What, what was our one two three. out of three? Right. They've been they've been terrible in August. So put it that way. So and, and then here's the thing: the Royals are the second worst team in baseball. We thought we thought because we talked about the Red Sox right before they played the A's. We thought they would sweep them. 
Do you, do you still feel that the Red Sox could sweep the uh, the Royals here? Twenty seven yeah. games, or just sorry, so. twenty three games home. out of first place in the AL Central. They play them at home. I think there's a, I, they should. If they if they really think they're ser- serious contenders to get one of those wild card spots, then they really think, hey, this is important. We got to sweep these guys, right? Because they got t- their schedule is pretty tough the rest of the way. Right. It's going to be a lot of games against Baltimore, right, and Toronto, and uh, and Tampa Bay. Right, and the, the, those teams are those are playoff teams. They, even the Yankees, right? The Yankees are no slouch. They're gonna, they, they, even though they're in last place right now. I mean, Judge is back. He hasn't found his groove yet, but he probably will before the season's over. The Yankees have pretty good pitching, so I, I think the Red Sox job is gonna, only going to get tougher when these these teams that are in the cellar are playing you. You got to win those games, and uh, I don't know. They, they played poorly ever since uh, the clock turned over to uh, August. I'll say this, Very though. Poor. The Red Sox, first, if they want to get a wild card spot, they need to get out of last place. That's that, that's that's the big thing. Judge is back now for the Yankees. Uh, Stan, here's the thing. I don't know if you saw the uh, the, the, the video. Stan's jogging around and, and gets you know picked at at home. He, he was doing a jog. Me and you can run faster than Judge, or than, than Stan around the third baseline. He's been a big disappointment this year. He has been. And, well, J- Judge got hurt. They couldn't hit for the life yeah, of them. We could probably yeah. hit better uh, on the Yankees uh, than they could have. I don't know about that, but uh, they... He's, he's been very poor this year. So, I mean, the Yankees, you know, once again, disappointments as usual. You know, at least, you know, this time... They're not disappointing in the in the the postseason like they generally are. Now they're disappointing in the regular season. However, I will say this: the AL East is the hardest division in baseball. So the the Yankees, as of right now, would almost be number one in the AL Central, which is, I guess, what the second worst division in baseball. Mm-hmm. The NL Central being the third worst, they'd be two games out from that one spot. the The Orioles, though, seventy wins right now, tied for the most in the MLB. It's amazing. Hey, Orioles. Well, they did it through rebuilding, right? They, they have got- a phenomenal farm system. <coughs> a phenomenal farm system. So I, I, I got to give it to the Orioles. Uh, but I do think that will wrap up uh, the news. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.